So let's talk about the equipment. So this is the equipment I took, and it looks like I'm not traveling light, but I traveled really, really light. I took one camera body. I did take a tripod, and I didn't use it very often. And the any any city now, you open a tripod, it's it's instant death, which is why instead I took my favorite accessory, and I used it extensively. <laughs> so this is a Platypod Ultra. Now, those of you who watch our show, The Grid, know about Platypod, because we talk about it all the time. They're one of the sponsors of The Grid, but that's not why I'm telling you. I take this little baby everywhere. It is made of like commercial grade aluminum, aircraft aluminum. It weighs nothing. It's incredibly, incredibly sturdy. You've got one. Why am I showing you? I have several. <laughs> and and uh, but see, I use mine differently. I have the. They have these little spiky feet that you can screw in here. You can use three or four at a time. Yep. You can put the spikes where they go down. So if you have like a, a log or something, or a rock or anything, rock. yeah, it fits perfectly. And, and then I also use it on the hood of my car with the spike feet where the spikes are up because they have a rubber tip yep. on the other side. So I've, I've put it on my, the hood of my car is sloped down and it. I've, Shot. Yeah, I don't use those at all. <laughs> I just use this. All right, this literally fits in your coat pocket. That's how small it is. It is so small, you can fit it in a shirt pocket. And what I do is this. You take this, you mount your, uh, this is an Oben BE-117 is what you want. So your camera fits right inside of here and that's it. That's your rig. Instead of using a tripod, I use this. Number one, it lets you get down low. But it also comes with a strap if you want to strap it onto something on the side of a light pole or anywhere. It's, it's amazingly versatile and no security guard cares. They look at it, they walk by, and they just keep walking. This is not I, the tripod I, you're looking for. Th that's exactly <laughs> it. I set this up in places where it says tripods are forbidden, but these are welcome. Nobody, for whatever reason, has a problem with these whatsoever. So this was my secret weapon everywhere I went in New York. Travel light, you'll have more fun, you'll be able to enjoy yourself. And you ask anybody that owns one, like just people fall in love with them because all of a sudden, People don't hassle you, and you can put cameras in places you normally wouldn't put them. And you use a tripod, you use it more time. You'll stabilize your camera more because you have it. Next, we're going to go to our first location, and that's going to be the rest of the classes going to locations. The first one we're going to look at is, is a cathedral. Now, when you think of it, New York City and an amazing cathedral, everybody's first thought is, oh, it's, you're going to go to St. Patrick's Cathedral. Sure. And, and St. Patrick's is very nice. It is perhaps the most tripod unfriendly place in the world. You set up a tripod there and, and they all of a sudden become very unreligious. <laughs> so you, Your tripod you doesn't have a You don't want to set prayer. up a tripod there. I, there's all kinds of stories we could tell about tripods, but I, I'm gonna try to, and we're gonna look at St. Patrick's. We did go in there for just a minute, but we spent a very short amount of time there. I'm gonna try to convince you to go someplace else. Instead, not that far, maybe 15 minutes by cab from there, is not just one of the most amazing cathedrals in New York City, but one of the most amazing I've seen anywhere and probably vies for the most beautiful cathedral in America. It is the Cathedral of St. John the Divine. What an unbelievable place. The scale of this, now I'll show you the behind the scenes shot here if you wanna take a quick look. So uh, this is my platypod on location. Yeah. It doesn't draw any attention. The security guards look right at it. They walk right past it, nobody cares. Uh, but it gives you that, with a wide angle lens down low, it really gives you that epic feel. So this is simply, all I did was just, you know, set it down, aim the camera up a little bit and, and away you go. So very easy to do. And uh, I'm choosing F11 at 100 ISO because I want pretty much everything in focus. Um, here is back a little further, and this is pretty interesting. And I, I, can you see my cursor on screen here? So there is, these are sculptures, little sculptures going all the way up. This thing, you just have no idea the scope of this church. So here's the behind the scenes shot for the shot that you're seeing here, and this is what you're seeing is the lazy photographer. So I'm... <laughs> Uh, and and, and the, the shot looks, you know, uh, wider and bigger because look how low. See, see the coin, like the little thing on the floor, the yeah. round. So that's right where I'm from. You can see the it's exact photo. That's the 16 millimeter on there. Now, I am operating the camera from my phone. So I'm controlling it from there. I can actually see through my phone what it's aimed at. So if I need to change it, I can fire it and I can actually see the frames coming in all right on my phone wireless right as it happens, it, it's tremendous. And you're doing bracketed shooting too. I'm doing bracketed shooting. I'm shooting uh, two stops under, two stops over, and in normal exposure, just to make sure I've got everything, or if I need to. In a situation this, uh, it, it, where you have bright lights coming in from the outside, and, and, and in the, you might have to do an HDR to capture it all. Not to make it look weird, but to capture it all, and make it look realistic. But this is the lazy photographer. You sit there, set your camera down, click, 
click. But what I'm really doing is I'm, I'm waiting for people to clear out of the way. Part of the game of shooting any place like this is literally being patient. So rather than just standing there in the middle and drawing attention to myself, I just sit down with my camera and wait. Now, I'm also making sure that no one walks into my camera, you know, but I, no, no one ever came even close. Give yourself three hours there because you're going to get lost in this place. It's just just amazing. But uh, I, I absolutely loved it. Just, just, a, just a wonderful location. Um, in the next segment, we will look briefly at St. Patrick's. And St. Patrick's, don't get me wrong, is very nice. But you're going to go, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to the Cathedral we're, it's, of we're, St. John the Divine. Now, this is actually St. Patrick's that you were talking about earlier. Right. This is the classic one, and uh, this is the place where the tripod police are in full force, but platypods, they walk right on by. Security guards look left and right. Eh, it's just a platypod. They don't care. So here he is. You walk in the front door of St. Patrick's. The doors were wide open, so we were across the street shooting, and I see, I go, oh, look, there's St. Patrick's. Oh, the doors are open. We might as well go in. And it is a very pretty church, it's of course. It's it, It's It's gorgeous. It, I, I, and and I'm, my best shot is coming up, and it's not the straight-on shot. This is you walked in the door, and you can see, oh, it's Platypon. Now, because I'm using the remote app, you know how I aim it? I use my foot. Take my foot. I go a little. Come I'm on. looking. I look a little to the left, a little to the right. Yeah. Okay, now, you can't adjust the tilt. You're just No, adjusting. I get the tilt like kind of set to where uh, you know, you see a little bit of the floor. So that's the key in these. Notice how the floor is all shiny and stuff. You get that shiny reflection when you get close to the floor. You can you will find that when you use this wide angle low like this, surfaces that do not do not appear shiny when you're standing there. So that doesn't look super shiny when right. you're standing there, but it looks mega shiny down yeah, low. It does. So down low you're you're going to get added reflections, which is one of the wonderful things about the low perspective. You know what else you can't see? There's a ton of people there. You can't see it. Look look at the people just right around me. Yeah. Right, just where I'm standing, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Look, two security guards right behind me. Yeah. Do they care? Nobody cares. So look, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's like 12 people in here. There's probably 50 people in these pews, but if you get down low, you can't see them. You can see Eric over here with his stinking iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> probably should have cloned that out, right? You know, yeah. I, I don't think I'd notice if, if you didn't point it out. Yeah, well, uh, well, next time anyone sees that, that'll be gone. Anyway, but so, so that's the view. Very pretty church. Don't get me wrong. I just don't. When you see the other one, you really get to spend some time there. Here's the back. So if you go all, I mean, excuse me, the very front. If you walk all the way to the front. So look at the front. See this area right yeah. here where my cursor is? Right there. Let's go all the way to the front. And I put my, pla you know, platypod down there. And this is the altar area. And then here is, as I'm turning to walk out. Now, one of the secrets to get a place to not have a lot of people is to literally be the last one out. So anyway, uh, part, there's a couple of different ways to get, to have nobody in your shot. Get up early. Yeah. Be really, really, really patient, which in some cases, shoot low so where people are kind of hidden or be the last one in or the last one out. It's better to be the last one out. Here's why. When you're the first one in, it, more people are coming. Like, and, and we were, and you'll, we'll talk about that later. But when all, everything starts filling up, when you're the last one out, nothing, everyone's gone. There's no one left but you. you just drag your feet and just kind of, we're coming, just a second. We're packing up, you know, and just be the last one out and you're set. But that, that was just a quick look at St. Patrick's uh, just to get us kicking off. So next, we're looking at the Manhattan Bridge in this shot. So what it is, it's three things. It's this street, then it's the Manhattan Bridge, and if you look under the legs of the Manhattan Bridge, or through the legs, there's the Empire State Building way oh, off in okay. the distance. So this is the black and white version, which I like, but I also like the color version. Well, sure. So I think the color version, because of the, of the color of the bricks, and then the bridge is kind of a greenish, almost a teal too. I kind of like that look too. So that's different. But I went ahead and did a lens correction for you so you can see the difference because I like the way this looks with the tilting buildings. But if you were doing this from an architectural standpoint, you'd fix them like that. And you did that in post-process. So, yeah, that's done in post-process. We look at the difference. So here is the one with the tilting in and they're straightened. And it does change stuff. Now these are, you can see it's two slightly different shots taken, you know, a minute or two apart. But this one, 
I, I really prefer this. It just seems more epic sure. and gothic to me, and this seems more correct, but I don't think it's it's nearly as interesting. But it's not a tilt-shift lens, and that's kind of, that's very cool. That it's very powerful what you can do in post-processing. All right, can I let you in on a secret? Tell me. All right, see the shot here? Yeah. See the white car on the right? Yeah. Look in front of it. Here's what was really in front of it. Ah, <gasps> scaffolding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it took me about uh, about 45 minutes in Photoshop to get rid of that. It was not a, not easy to get rid of. But I think it was worth it. I like it so much better without all the scaffolding and the big sign and everything. So anyway, so that's it. I, here's a, a couple behind the scenes shots. That's just, hey, there I am holding the camera. See the guy behind me? He's got like a camera rig and there's people everywhere. And then this guy comes up and says, can you take a picture of me with my Polaroid? So I used his Polaroid camera, that's me shooting his Polaroid. And then a little while later he says, can you take another picture of me with my Polaroid? Sure, I'm not doing anything. So no, I took, of course, I took his, but I always stop and take it. If they see you with a camera, like other people are like, oh, he knows how to use a camera, can you, and then they hand you their phone, or a Polaroid in this case. But there's people everywhere. There were people everywhere, and, and I just put my platypod down there on the ground, and just, there's a whole group of kids standing in the street, and I, you know, I'm not there like on such official business that I can ask them to move or anything. Right. But yeah, there was, and, and I finally just said, look, there was a break for just a split second where, you know, the only reason why I got the break was a car came down the street. The kids moved out of the way. As soon as the car cleared, you know, my friend Eric's like, shoot, I put the camera down the yeah. and, and there we go. So every, we're like, kids, get out of the way. Pappy has to take a <laughs> shot. Anyway, it's worth, it's worth the trip over there and it's free because it's, you know, right there, it's free. Another one of those iconic places in New York is Grand Central Station. And I love this image because you've got uh, a different take on it. I do. I also have a different name for it. It's called Grand Central Terminal. Oh, well, we have to do the whole class over. No, we don't. <laughs> We're going to roll on. So, uh, yeah, I, I thought we need to do Grand Central because a lot of people like it. Now, if you want to go and do a serious photo shoot, you can go and uh, uh, apply for a permit to set up a tripod. Yeah, because I've is. actually heard the tripod story about yes, this place. Yes, because I tried it once. I went there and I set up a tripod. I didn't get a leg and a half out before police were all over me. And they were very like, you cannot put up a tripod. They were like super no tripods. I mean, I was like open the legs and they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, they were all over me. But you see a lot of those long exposure shots where you have the ghosting of the people and stuff and the, the beams of light and all this stuff. And so I really wanted to shoot there. So I did, I went, not this time, but I, I did in the, in the past go apply for a permit, was granted a permit. I've talked to a number of people that you just basically have to go, I, I wanna come in here and shoot. I'm a photographer, I'm an artist, and I would love to come in but you don't have to apply for that permit because you've got a platypod. So I go in there, I set up a platypod. I got Marines looking at me because there, there are Marines stationed in there. Uh, they, you've got police everywhere. You've got high security and they're like, platypod, no problem. Take a look at the shot, made it black and white. Now, it is, this is a very nice shot in color. The ceiling is green. The walls are very warm and yellow. But anyway, that's the shot. How hard was it to take it? Well, not so hard. Now, I got up early in the morning, and I'm wearing, like, a beanie hat because my ears were cold. <laughs> anyway, but, yeah, I'm right there. You can see there's, like, you know, lots of people there. So what I basically did was I just put it there, and it, it, it did balance itself fine. If I wanted to be more secure, I would have put the little rubber feet in or yeah, the little, yeah. Little it would have, then it feet. would have been like dead on the money. But it didn't rock back and forth unless you touched it, you know. So I was like, oh, don't touch it. Don't move. Whoa. Anyway, you can see more of the color that would be there if you're not shooting the black and white. But I'm shooting, uh, I didn't even have to put like an ND filter on. This is a long exposure. It's dark in there. Yeah. So I just went to like F22 and it gave me a long enough exposure to get, see the people, how they're, there's just a few people there and there's ghosting in the movement. I think that's oh, kind of yeah. what you want. So, uh, so that's the shot. All right, so when you walk outside of Grand Central Station, out of the middle, so there's an entrance on the end, there's an entrance on the other end, when you walk out the middle. So one's going upstairs, it's the opposite one, it walks out to the street. There is the Pershing Square Central Cafe. Okay. And it is uh, kind of an iconic thing. It's very, very cute. And we actually ate there after I took the shot. So I started all the way at Grand Central Station. So this is outside Grand Central Station. You can see I'm holding my platypod in my hand. Right. And I took this shot just to kind of see what the framing is and I didn't like it. So a lot of times before I actually set it down, I'm gonna walk around and find out what looks good. It did not look good from here, so I moved really close. I'm just on the other side of those bikes. 
right there. See how many people are there? Yeah. So you, so all I had to do was wait until there was a break right in front of the the, the Pershing Square Cafe, and j literally just just wait. And that's that's what happened here. To, and take a look. I, I didn't have to really clone anybody out there. That was there's, there's actually a guy over here. There's how long did you have to wait for this? Five ten minutes. Yeah, that's not bad. I didn't need everybody on the sides and everything out. I just kind of waited because what happens is when the light changes, everybody on that side of the street walks across. Okay. So you do have a few moments, uh, and it's just one that you know it's kind of a classic. It's very unusual to have under an overpass a little restaurant. But anyway, that's the Pershing Square. You're right there at the Grand Central. Don't miss this cute little iconic out of the way, but right in the middle of everything kind of place, the Pershing Square Central Cafe. New York City, every single time I go, I go to uh, Times Square and it is beautiful there. There's a lot to take in. It's a hard thing for me to figure out how to photograph it. It's kind of, I think of it like, like the Grand Canyon. You go to the Grand Canyon, you're standing in front of this amazing thing, and then you lift the camera up to your, your eye and it becomes a very small little square and you're like, what happened? Times Square is kind of the same thing because Times Square surrounds you and envelops you. So when you lift your camera up to your eye, now you're gonna take part of this giant thing that's like a 360 thing and, all, and put it into a small square and it's actually hard to get a good, good shot of it. There's a couple of challenges. One is the tourists. Yeah. The tourists are, I mean, Times Square is, is one of the reasons why people come to New York. It is packed all the time. There's people and tourists everywhere and they've got food because there's food trucks and everything right there now. Right, and there's people with costumes and there's, yeah. there's just stuff going on. So how do you get Times Square without being full of people? Get up early. This is uh, one of the shots and it is taken on these red tables. So I actually put the little platypod right on the table and no problem. Now, I didn't even try, I didn't even take a, a regular tripod. I gotta imagine I would have about 15 seconds of that leg going down. <laughs> yeah. And there's, there's gotta be a no tripod rule there like you can't believe. But there is never a no platypod rule. Well, not that I encountered anyway. So uh, put this up and that's, that's where this shot came from right here. Let's take another shot. So this is making uh, uh, the reflections. This is making the most of the reflections. So there are these concrete barriers that you'll see when you're standing there are quite shiny. And as we learned earlier, the closer you put your lens to the glass, the more reflective it's gonna be. So that doesn't look very reflective. No, it doesn't, but if it gets down close to the- Then look how shiny it looks. That's crazy. Yeah, I know, it really does make a difference. I don't think people realize what a difference that makes. And that of course is right next to the red chairs. There's that, that place. And then, here we are, you can see the little rig sitting right there and nobody bothers you. Now, another place as we're walking towards, we found an area where it was wet, where the ground was, was wet. I don't know if someone was you know, spraying off their front of their business or whatever, but it was just this one little area was wet. And if it's wet, we know it creates reflections. So we put the camera right there on the floor, right that there. That is so cool. Okay, so I think people like me, because I've learned it fairly recently and you already knew this, the, the, when you get it down close to the ground, the wet area doesn't have to be that big. No, it's, it's not. And so it's, I'm always it's a thinking they area. have to be giant puddles no. to do this, but you don't have to do that when you have the platypod and get it low. As opposed to a tripod, you gotta have a giant now, puddle. Now, look over here, look where my cursor is right here. Yeah. When you actually do have a puddle, this is wet, but that's a puddle. When it's a puddle, it's a mirror reflection. Okay. So that's, wet is great because you get, you get the colors reflected, but you don't get the detail. When it's a little puddle of water, you get an actual mirror reflection. So okay, that's kind of Okay, now I've nice. got a Rick Salmon cheat on Ooh, something yeah. like this because- Take your own people, water? Exactly. Yeah. People that are, that are watching this are thinking, well, that's great, but I don't see a puddle there. Can I tell you what, if you pour out a gallon of water yeah. in Times Square, someone will think you're up to something, and a, and a police officer will shoot you. No, but <laughs> this I'm is saying, not, a, a you'll hear a sniper. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about a, a 16 ounce or a 20 ounce Yeah, I wouldn't do it in New York. I would do it anywhere else. I'd do it in Chicago. <sighs> I'd do it in Las Vegas. I'd do it in Los Angeles. You do anything weird in, the, in Times Square and you get shot. Instant death. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I, was still, I, I wouldn't take my chances. There are so many, and you know, do you say, Scott, did you feel safe in Times Square at night? There are so many police officers in Times Square, it is unbelievable. So here we go, here's another shot of it right there. Shooting that little bit of puddle and that reflection, it kind of gives you that. Picture yourself in New York. 
<laughs> with your wife and family, and you've get, you're there for five days. Uh huh. And you look at your wife and you go, honey, can I have just one day to just shoot? Just one day. And she says, no. Because <laughs> that's what's going to happen to you. You're going to have to shoot as you go. But you're going to get great now shots. Now you know where to go, too. Because now you know where to go. And this is the best news, and this is the thing that should inspire you and propel you forward. There are absolutely no way that you're not going to get better shots <laughs> of Central Park and a lot of other places in New York than I got. So you'll be able to come back and say, I kicked Scott Kelby's butt with my New York pictures. Look, the trees are green. Here's Tudor Overpass. Look how much better mine looks. You, you'll have lots of opportunities to take better shots than you saw today, which is what it's all about. Thank you guys for watching. Larry, thank you very much for joining me. I had a blast. And I wish you great success and lots of great images in your travels to New York City. Take care, everybody.